All right, I'm here with Maximus. That's his official name, Maximus. Um, and uh, this is Max's roadmap to success. And so Max uh, was surrendered to me uh, a long time ago because he lived in a yard that he was on a leash and all the neighbor's dogs were off leash and they came and kind of teased Max. And that created, I think, uh, that's where I think he, his anxiety started and some of his not being a super big fan of other dogs came from. So um, uh, they did the best they could, but surrendered him to me. And then Max went to a couple of other homes. Yes, oh, you wanna play a little fetch while we do this? I can do that for you, drop, fetch. And so, uh, yeah, go get it, fetch. Um, and so anyways, we're in Max's new forever home and uh, I think he, this is gonna be the winner for him. Uh, so basically I wanted to, uh, I just kind of went over some, uh, some stuff. Max does best if he gets exercise about three times a day. He also needs some mental stimulation. Now there are a lot of puzzles. The Guardian got a, a mega paw treat ball. Playing tug of war is a great way to burn energy, which Max loves to do. Remember for Max, he likes, to, he'll play, if he brings you something and you grab it, he's gonna tug. If you don't wanna play tug of war, tell him to drop before you reach for it and he'll just drop it. Um, so uh, getting max mental stimulation as well as physical stimulation uh, exercise will be really helpful. Also getting some exercise like before things happen. Nobody ever thinks about this. Taking your dog, getting your dog some exercise before a walk produces a much better walk. So um, if you're going to, uh, because he has a little bit of re dog reactivity, you might want to exercise him, do the doggy stairmaster, a game of fetch or whatever it is, um, give him 10 minutes to recover, then go for a walk. Now Max's, one of Max's problems is anxiety. So if you go over and pick up the leash and he starts giving those anxious signals, what we, what we want to do is help Max practice the procedure of being leashed up without going for a walk. That culmination ending in a walk is why he gets all excited. They start thinking about that's classical conditioning. So you might just go over to where the leash is, pick it up, and then Max gets excited, you put it leash down. So you do this as you're just walking to the bathroom. You're not planning on taking for a walk anyways. We want to just get used to it. When I pick up the leash, no big deal. Um, eventually you can pick up the leash and jiggle it and then put it down and he doesn't get, and we keep on doing that until he doesn't get anxious anymore. Then eventually pick it up and lean for him. Um, walking around the house and leash, uh, putting the, attaching the leash when he's finally calm and then take it off, go to the next room to attach it. So what we're doing is we're just using the leash out of context. And so that's a nice way for him to get used to it. And that's kind of the formula I'd like you guys to use. Anything that Max gets really anxious or worked up about, I want you to kind of analyze the activity and say, how can I break this down into small individual steps? And so we think of going to the door and just open the door as one step. First step might be walking to the door. And as soon as Max gets, uh, maybe I get five feet away from the door, Max gets excited. Well, then I might back up and walk towards the door, but stop at six feet. So I'm stopping before he gets worked up and I practice that four or five or 10 times or whatever until Max is just chill. Then I go to five feet and then I'm trying to walk away. And then I go to four feet away from the door and three feet away from the door. And I keep on doing this until Max, and if Max shows any anxiety, stress, whining, or whatever it is, then I'm pushed a little too far. I back up to a previous step. So the idea for this is kind of like you're putting your, t uh, you're dipping your foot into a hot tub. And you just don't want to put your foot all the way in. You just dip a toe and then a, a toe and a knuckle and another toe and so forth. So it's the same sort of principle for Max, always backing up, and not just Max, all dogs, backing up to a previous level of success, practicing that a couple times, and then inching forward a little bit, a little bit. Um, it's better to have conservative, slow progress than big jumps and, set, and, and have him sometimes fail at the end of that because that failure, the last repetition is what, what they're going to remember the most. So you could use a Google Scent Games. That's a great way to preoccupy him. I mentioned getting a uh, lick mat and smearing peanut butter on top of that. That's a great way for him to be preoccupied. Um, you can also, uh, uh, let me see, they have a bunch of treat uh, puzzles and IQ games and stuff like that you can get for dogs on Amazon and Chewing and places like that. And those are great ways for him to burn some energy as well. Um, so if he can get, I think, three fetches a day, maybe a game of tug of war or two. I remember late at night when you're in here watching TV and Max brings you one of the balls, just throw it over the railing and have him run down the stairs and go grab it, bring it back to you, make sure he drops it first, then pick it up and throw it again. And that can be a nice little game. And I would try to count so you know kind of how many tosses he typically needs. It's gonna fluctuate, but he might say, okay, he's gonna need 15 tosses. My kitchen and my house is a little bit uh, tighter, and so I would do maybe about 30 tosses into my kitchen, and then he was pretty relaxed. And when you get done, you just say, enough, and kind of go like this, and Max figures that out. Um, let me see, um, I'd also recommend that you incorporate some rules and structure. Uh, rules like not being allowed in the kitchen where we're preparing food, not being able to jump up or be near people who are eating food. Um, also making him do some pre-max. Pre-max means the less desirable behavior earns you more desirable behavior. 
you, the door to go outside is right over there. So Max wants to go outside, go over the door and tell him to sit. Only once. If he sits within two seconds, then open the door and let him go out. If he doesn't sit, I would walk away, sit down, wait one minute or until Max settles down, then go back to the door and tell him again. And so after a while, Max learns that I've got to do what they want me to do the first time. And when they do, then I get good things happen. If I don't, they don't care. They're not yelling at me. They're not mad, but they go on to their next thing. I'm the one missing out. Now also for Max, because a visual for him is sometimes problematic. So basically the front door of the house has these nice uh, picture windows that look out. We might want to block just with white paper, just cut it out exactly the same shape of the window panes and put those in maybe the bottom two uh, sections. So that way when Max goes to the door, he hears the dog or the mailman, he goes to the door, he can't see those people or not. And there's another window that's kind of beyond a railing where he can't get to, but he can see through. So he might also need to do it for the bottom of that one. Um, but that way that helps them practice not barking and reacting to it because it, dogs are practicing everything they do. The more he practices barking, the more he's likely to continue to bark. We also talked about uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Uh, petting with a purpose is if you want to pet your dog or your dog is asking for some attention from you, you're going to make him do something to earn it first. So Max comes over and nudges me. Max, Max, sit. Yes. So then as soon as he sits, if he sits within a two-second window, then I pet him. Yeah, but if he comes up and nudges me or jumps up at me and I reach out and pet him, he's telling me what to do and I'm listening and obeying him. And that can confuse him to think that we have the same level of authority or that maybe he's in charge of me or in charge of security. So the more we ask him to ask for things or to do things before he gets it, uh, the better. You want to get this? Yes, the more movement, the more attractive it is to Maxi. Um, and yes, you want to play a little tug? We'll play a little tug while I talk. Okay, so uh, for, pay, uh, for basically petting with a purpose, we're petting our dog to pay the dog. So um, after a while, if you get in the habit of doing this, the dog will start walking up in front of you and sitting down saying, hey man, I'm sitting down, why are you not petting me? Because in his mind, that's a proper way to do it because every time he sits down uh, or he nudges you, you're telling him to sit or to lay down. So if he nudges you or barks you or anything, you tell him to sit or lie down. Uh, you can also tell him to shake, he's an older dog. And then if he does it, you pet him. If he doesn't do it, you don't pet him. Um, and then you go back to doing what you're doing. That will motivate him next time to listen, saying, hey, the D girl in this house, if I don't do what she wants, she's on to the next thing and I'm the one missing out. And that motivates him to want to listen to her the next time. Yes. And every once in a while you play Tug War, let him pull it out of your way. Yes. And he's usually pretty good about bringing it back, but that helps with the confidence so he feels like he's winning. Um, passive training is, before I talk about passive training, I'm gonna talk about marking. Now in the video above, we talked about click for looks and using a clicker. A clicker or a marker word are ways to indicate to Max that I did, he did what I want. Max, come here. Max. Yes, come here. Sit. Yes. So as soon as his butt hits the ground, I said the word yes. I believe the guardians here are gonna use the word yes or good, just pick one. And the idea is every time he does what you want, you say yes. So you say drop and he drops it, yes, and then you pet him. His, you tell him to sit and his butt hits the ground, you say yes. Now that's passive training, these are the things that he already knows, needs, knows how to do. But if I'm training him to do something new, I would maybe uh, every step along the way that I get him to do it, I would say yes. If I wanna teach him to maybe play dead. So the first thing I do is I teach him to uh, lay down. And I might say yes. Then I teach him to lay on his side and I say yes for that one. Uh, play dead is actually bang and he flops over and pretends he's dead, but that's a whole lot of steps. So marking is marking the step or the segment or the action that you want him to do. Um, so it's really helpful for training. You can also use the clicker. You saw how responsive Mac was, Max was to the clicker. Problem is you don't always have that clicker. You can use clickers and marker words at the same time, that's fine. Um, so basically what you wanna do is, I like using uh, for capturing, or passive training as I've been calling it for years, is just to mark. So if Max were to come to me, not one of me asking, Max, here, here. It's like, I wanna play tug. Um, very deterrent, he, got, he makes his mind up, he wants to do what he wants to do. So basically, if let's say I'm just kind of hanging out and Max come over, comes over to me, I would say yes when he gets to me and petted him and pet him. Um, if, he, if I'm watching TV and he sits next to me, I say yes and then pet him. He lays down, I say yes and pet him for that brings me toys, yes. So what we're doing is we're just marking all the things that he does to let him know that I really like it when you sit. It gets, it's a great way to get my attention. Remember for dogs, good attention and bad attention is the same thing. So if we chastise Max for barking or whatever it is, he's like, oh, barking is a great way to get people's attention. I'd rather have him learn to sit, lay down, come to you, bring toys, drop it, and all that fun stuff as opposed to barking for attention. 
Um, the, watch, the word that we use for feeding is lasagna. Now, that's a cue. A cue is a word that we use to tell the dog what to do. We don't assign the cue until we're 90% sure the dog's gonna do what we want him to do. Max, so I would say sit when I'm pretty sure that I can lure him into that sit. If I can't, then I would just lure him, and as soon as his butt hits the ground, then I would say sit, or excuse me, I would say yes or good when the butt hits the ground. Um, now we went downstairs and I have videos for all the stuff. So if you forgot any of these, let me know. But Max has a touch, touch, yes. So as soon as this, so you flat chop your hand. And if he doesn't go for your hand within about two seconds, pull back and chop a little closer. When he touches his hand to your, uh, his nose to your hand, are you all tuckered up from that play? Uh, but as soon as he touches his nose to your hand, you say yes. And then you put a treat here. You keep your hand frozen. Don't go like this and come back and get it. Boom. And then he touches it. Uh, uh, yes, and put your treat there. And then I chop the other side, so I'm going back and forth. And eventually, this is a game where you can play in the room. Um, I also have taught him uh, uh, take a lap, which means to go around me. So I hold the treat this way, lure him behind me, and I have a treat in this hand. And as soon as he gets behind me, then I go like this, and then kind of catch him to do the last part of that circle. And then when he gets around, I would say yes and give him the treat. I also show you how to do the middle cue, which is having him just come in between your legs and sit there. Um, but there's a lot of different tricks and commands that I think Max uh, can pretty easily learn. And it'd be a great way for you guys to bond with him. And also gives you nice ways to distract him. Uh, the more, uh, just like us, the more skills that a dog has, the more self-esteem and, and uh, confidence they have. Max used to have very, very low self-esteem. He wouldn't look, look people in the eye. Uh, we went over the focus exercise. So for the focus exercise, grab about 12 treats, keep them in this hand, grab one in this hand, let me pantomime. I put them here. And then Max just looked right up at my face. So as he does that, I raise my the treat from my hand, from my knee to my nose, and then straight to Max's mouth. Now at first it's one second, one second, but eventually when you're doing it a while, you one second here and 15 seconds like this. But if Max starts coming forward, that means that we're moving too fast. We need to back up. So count your head. If I'm like one, two, three, four, five, and Max comes forward, then I would go one, two, three, four. And the next time I do it, I beat him to the punch. Uh, let me see what else. Um, the engage disengage game. When the weather gets nicer, I would kind of coordinate with your neighbors and say, uh, you know, hey, uh, I, you know, if they, especially if you see them playing fetch, be nice to let them play fetch, but have them go inside and have ten minutes. So when that dog comes out, when you're first playing the engage disengage game, the dog's just kind of casually running around the yard. If the dog is running around the yard or moving around the yard casually, if the dog's running around the yard. That's going to capture Max's attention, and he's maybe more likely to be reactive, or you might need to have more space. Um, but I'd like to have you do it with ideally with one dog at a time and that way the dog Max starts to associate the, the look of the dog or the smell of the dog and all the stuff we talked about in the other video. Um, now when it gets nice enough where we're sub uh, we're plus zero again you might want to walk Max with that other dog and it might be the sort of thing where you're walking Max on this side of the street the other dog is on the other side of the street but the idea is we're all even. So whoever's in front can be perceived to be the leader in the dog world. So I've done this where you're on opposite sides of the street walking parallel, and then eventually one of the dogs is right inside the street, just right outside the curb. And then you're eventually in the middle of the street, and then eventually on the grass next to it. And then eventually you have person, person, dog, dog. And so that way, Max has a positive experience. He smelled the dog, he saw the dog, he heard the dog, he walked with the dog. Both dogs wanted to pee on the fire hydrant and our humans wouldn't let us do that. So they have this bonding experience. And that uh, uh, Max can learn to be around other dogs, but he has to be warmed up several times in a row. So that click for looks is a great way to do it. The scent thing. So remember, get a, have a, uh, take a, a washcloth, uh, clean their hands first, and then rub it all over your, their dogs. Preferably right here behind his, uh, can you see Max in the shot? Mm -hmm. Yep. right here between his shoulder blades and on his back in his undercarriage. Then flip it over to do the same thing, have him put a Ziploc bag. So I'd have a handful of treats in this hand and the, and the towel in this hand. I go like this, Max looks at it, sniffs it, I pull it away and I give the dog a treat. And uh, give Max a treat and do that about five or six times. After a while, after about the fifth time, I would probably say, Kojak, and then pull it away. So now I'm assigning the dog's name, he smells the dog and then he gets a treat. So that's another way for him to start building up some positive association. Then he goes over to the fence, he smells that dog. He's like, oh, I've, I've, I've hooked you up before. I've, I've, I've sampled your treats before. You're a good dog, Kojak. Um, so try to do that with some walks. Right now with cold weather, it's, he's getting used to the house and all that stuff, but I'm, that's my one concern is that if they're running around, he's gonna get worked up. We don't want him to run up and down the, the fence barking at him or that anxiety that I talked about. 
Um, that's the last little thing I guess I want to talk about for Max. So if Max gets focused on something, often with balls, and he starts breathing heavy and getting whining and whimpering, that's not healthy, that's anxiety for him. So if he's doing those things, we wanna, if you have to, you can go pick him up. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to make note of whatever that activity is and try to, again, like I talked about earlier, introduce it to him in small segments or do the engage, disengage, or something to create a positive association. But if he's in the moment, he won't listen, you just pick him up and take him inside. Uh, but the idea is to try to avoid those things as much as we possibly can so that Max doesn't practice that. Max is, uh, just like any other dog, Max is practicing everything he does. So the more that he winds at the fence, the more he's likely to wind the fence or run at the fence or bark at the window and the rest of that stuff. Uh, Maxi, uh, you have anything else you want me to go over in this? I think that's, I think that's everything you covered, everything we did. It's like I'm, I'm do, I've done this before <laughs> a couple thousand times. Yeah. Maxwell, come here. Come here, buddy. You're going to make me grab you, huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Mm. Yes, you're very vocal. Well, M Max uh, is kind of bittersweet because uh, we've enjoyed having Max at the home, but uh, I'm glad that he has a home with a, a D girl that he can be good friends with and learn some tricks and uh, be the only dog so he gets all that attention. Is that right, Maxwell? Yep. Well, this is Max, and this is Max's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog or your Max, only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>